Hello, you're watching International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. UN Security Council holds meeting on Ukraine. Pipeline burst causes oil spill in Ecuadorian Amazon. US political prisoner Leonard Peltier contracts COVID-19. And finally, NGO warns of coerced transfers of Rohingya refugees. Russian diplomat Vasily Nebenzia has accused the US and NATO of creating war hysteria in Eastern Europe. He was responding to US representative Linda Thomas Greenfield during a UN Security Council meeting on January 31st. Greenfield reiterated US claims of an imminent Russian invasion of Ukraine. She called on the UN to take urgent steps to prevent war, stating that it would lead to horrible consequences. The US has said that Russia has amassed over 100,000 troops at the Ukrainian border. Nabenzia disputed these numbers on Monday and added that the deployment was defensive against NATO's military threats. He added that the talk of war was provocative in and of itself. He also accused the US and NATO of engaging in megaphone diplomacy and pumping weapons into the Ukraine. Russia has repeatedly denied allegations of an invasion. Ukraine's own president, Zelensky, has rebuked the US and its allies for overhyping the situation. These countries have repeatedly also issued threats of sweeping sanctions on Russia. Meanwhile, Moscow has demanded that NATO halts its military expansion in Eastern Europe. It is also seeking guarantees that Ukraine will be barred from membership to the organization. NATO and the US have rejected these demands. Russia has said that it is looking for military technical solutions without a physical invasion to address these threats. It has also asserted that Ukraine should respect the 2014 Minsk Protocol. US and Russia diplomats have planned to discuss the situation in a phone call on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Poland has become the latest NATO ally to pledge weapons support to Ukraine. Next, we go to Ecuador, where an oil spill has now spread to a protected area of the Amazon rainforest. The disaster took place on January 28th after a pipeline owned by the private OCP Ecuador ruptured. The company has claimed that the damage was caused when a rock struck the line in a mudslide. While the extent of the spill is not known, the government is calling it a major pollution event. Oil has also contaminated the Coca River, which supplies water to indigenous communities. OCP had initially claimed that the pipeline had burst in a zone which was not directly exposed to rivers. It also said that the oil had been contained. However, videos shared by the Quechua people in Sucumbios province showed the extent of the devastation. OCP announced on Saturday that it stopped pumping and initiated cleanup and environmental remediation. The pipeline in the Nepo region has the capacity of 450,000 barrels of crude oil per day. This pipeline, along with a state-owned project, had also burst in April 2020, contaminating the Coca River. The rupture was caused by soil erosion along the river banks. According to Amazon Frontlines, the disaster impacted over 27,000 Quechua people living downstream. A lawsuit seeking justice and urgent preventative measures was dismissed by a lower court. The case is still pending before the Constitutional Court. Activists in the US have renewed their demands for the release of Leonard Peltier. The 77-year-old indigenous elder and activist is the longest-serving political prisoner in the country. It was announced on January 28th that Peltier had tested positive for COVID-19. He has been imprisoned for 46 years without any evidence that he committed a crime. Peltier suffers from serious comorbidities including diabetes and an aortic abdominal aneurysm. Since he has contracted COVID, his life has been put at greater risk. He is being held at the Coleman Federal Correctional Complex in Florida. The facility has not provided booster shots to detainees despite the threat of the Omicron variant. Supporters are demanding that Peltier be immediately transferred to a hospital. Peltier was a member of the American Indian Movement which organized an occupation in the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in 1973. The community was protesting the corrupt leadership of Oglala Lakota Sioux Chairman Dick Walson. The action was followed by years of violent attacks by FBI-sponsored vigilantes. In 1975, two agents in unmarked cars stormed the ranch where Peltier and other activists were staying. A shootout ensued and the agents and one indigenous man, Joseph Stunts, were killed. In 1977, Leonard Peltier was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences. This was after a trial rife with misconduct, FBI coercion of witnesses and a biased juror. Peltier remains imprisoned despite even his trial prosecutor admitting that it is unjust. And for our final story, Fortify Rights has warned of involuntary transfers of Rohingya refugees by Bangladesh. 
the Burmese NGO has said that over 1,000 people were shifted to Bhasanchar between December 18th and January 6th. The remote island is flood-prone and largely inaccessible. Fortify Rights spoke to 10 refugees in Bangladesh, a camp in charge government official and representatives from the UN and the Nila Union. It also reviewed mobile videos filmed by refugees showing coercion leading up to the transfers. A man was beaten in December 2021 before being forcibly sent to Bhasanchar. An internal UN document raised concerns over the separation of families, restrictions on movement and risk of arrest. The UN has also noted the presence of unaccompanied children on the island. Majis or community representatives reported being pressured to get people to relocate. Officials reportedly told them that they would deny shelters, bamboo and other supplies. Around 1 million Rohingyas fled to Bangladesh to escape the genocide perpetrated by Myanmar's army in 2016 and 2017. Officials reportedly also suggested to the Majis that aid agencies would only be allowed to operate on Bhasanchar. There was also an attempt to clear out two blocks of Camp 25 on December 16th. This is a violation of a Bangladesh UN agreement which assured that relocations would be voluntary. And that's all there is for today's episode. For more such stories, please visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.